Must be two years since we installed the Lignum high tie bearing. Easy belt. We're occasionally slipping here. The ribs come up quite a bit. Now that all the snow is melting in the mountain. We're going to lift the water wheel up. We're going to have a look at the bearings. We're going to tighten the knee belt. And see how things look. So this is the hydraulic power unit here where we use this to lift the water wheel up out of the water. So here we go. So I made this aluminum cover for the generator. I was concerned of uh, there's so much water here dripping off the trees. It rains. We measure rain by the meter here. So I was worried about the uh, water getting into the motor or into the generator. So anyways, I made this cover, which I now have to take off. Tighten the belts. I need to loosen the, uh, the bolts on the slide here. Then I can just tighten up these jacking screws and tighten the belts. I don't want to tighten it too much because it's hard on the bearings, but too loose and it'll slip. So it's a bit of a balancing act. So this is how I tighten the V-belts. I, I tighten these jacking screws, it pulls the motor back. It's actually quite a, amazing how much torque that this water wheel puts out. It actually causes these three large V-belts to slip. And it's probably because it's such low RPM, but uh, I mean these belts are sized for uh, you know 100 horsepower or more. Yet this makes nowhere near that much, but it just makes so much torque that it can cause these to slip. There's also the issue of uh, belt contact here. You can see that it'd probably be better if I had an idler in there to just give a little more wrap around this smaller pulley. So that's two years worth of wear. You can see it's actually, you know, it's worn this way, which is basically the, the force of gravity pulling it that direction. It's actually worn 
you know, five sixteenths of an inch at least there. Uh, kind of the good news about it, as it wears more, it should actually start wearing less because how these bearings are lubricated is as, as water gets in, it helps to lubricate. And uh, another issue that I was kind of concerned about is the fact that this block is just wood. It could crack. I don't know how strong this lignum vitae material is from a, a strength point of view. I know it wears really well. But I did wrap it in this stainless steel wrap because I was worried about if this ever cracked, it could, I could lose the whole water wheel into the river. So that was something that was keeping me up at night. So I feel a little better. I wrapped this stainless steel. Uh, it's almost like shim stock. And just one other thing I'd like to point out too is I also drilled a hole on the side here to admit. This will help admit more water into the bearing when it's facing downwards. Because when this wheel is in the running position this will be at the top and water will drip into that hole and hopefully lubricate the uh, the bearing better. Okay, we're going to lower it down and make some power. So you can see we're making around eight, nine hundred watts right now. It's bouncing around a little bit, but that's just the nature of the river. As it picks up, whoops, let's see if I can't get the light back here. As the river picks up, we're going to start making more energy. It seems to max out around two kilowatts right now. And that seems to be the absolute limit of the belts for slipping. Right now the river's just starting to come up. It's up about a foot over what it, the lowest point of the year, so it's uh, we're we're back into the generating season now. So pretty happy if we can generate around 1,500 watts continuous here. <laughs> 